A section of this video is sponsored by Hoyoverse. Alright, I wanted to know how many Tears of the Kingdom tips I could possibly cram into a single video in the shortest amount of time I can, so let's find out. The answer is 40, it's in the title. And by the way, if you happen to be new here, hit subscribe. First, fusing a sapphire to your shield will actually lower your entire body temperature. Adding a ruby to the shield will do the opposite, raising your core temperature. This applies to weapons with those gems attached as well, but it doesn't stack with the shield effect. Creating a ridiculous looking glob of fused together materials can be saved to auto build. Use that as a blueprint to actually suck those resources right to you, like these apples plucked right from their trees. If you attach a wing to your shield, when you initiate a shield surf, you'll also jump a little bit higher than normal. This is just enough to let you enter slow-mo with your bow, even from flat ground. If you're facing a battle talus and are struggling to get on top of it to hit its weak spot, most have something sticking out on the side that you can ascend to. This lets you easily get up there and kill the big rock's little rock. Move an object with Ultra Hand along a route that you want it to travel, then put it right back in front of you. Activating Recall on it will then automatically send it along that path, letting you create your own elevators and moving platforms. In the darkness of the underground region, try putting a giant Bright Bloom seed on the front of a vehicle. That'll automatically illuminate a large area around you while you explore, saving arrows and Bright Blooms. Fusing an elemental gem to the Master Sword, like a topaz here, will let you shoot both the electric orb and the Master Sword's beam at the same time, if your health is full. Now real quick, the sponsor of this video is the free-to-play RPG Honkai Star Rail. From Hoyoverse, which you might know for making Genshin Impact, their brand new thing that just came out on PC, iOS, and Android is Honkai Star Rail. It has cross-play and cross-progression between those, so you can play at big mode at home, then continue small mode while standing in line for chicken nuggets or something. I've played and enjoyed tons of turn-based RPGs, and honestly, the battle system here is really solid, with just that right amount of depth to it. Outside of combat, there's a lot of exploration across different regions, and a narrative stringing it all together. Brand new just added to the roster is Jin Yuin, which can be unlocked and put in your party right now. If this looks like your kind of thing, use the link I have down in the video description to download and play Honkai Star Rail free on PC and mobile. They also provided a promo code for you to instantly get 50 Stellar Jades. And since you probably don't know what that means yet, Stellar Jades are a currency that can be gained just by playing, which can lead to unlocking new characters, upgrades for them, and items. Thanks to Hoyoverse for supporting the channel, and now, back to Zelda. Fusing a bomb flower or an explosive object like a red barrel to a shield will launch you safely into the air when you do a shield surf. This also works with a spring and a shield as well, which has a secondary function of being able to bounce back enemies and projectiles. You can get a basic wing to fly just on its own by putting it near an edge, extending it outward with Ultra Hand, and putting it right back where it started. Activate Recall on it, get on, and when it's out in the air, hit L to cancel Recall. It should then begin flying for you. Any food item that has the descriptor Hardy on it, just cook that by itself. That makes a meal that completely heals you and provides bonus yellow hearts beyond your health limit. When you're airborne, you can scope in with the right stick click, and that will super slow down time. That'll let you easily survey the area around you while you remain awkwardly up in the air. Most projectiles larger than arrows can be frozen in time with recall and actually sent back in the opposite direction. If the enemy hasn't moved too far, this will damage them on the return. If you're running low on springs, you can summon one whenever you want by fusing anything to one, like an apple, which will have it then show up in auto build to favorite. Then you can always just spawn a spring for six zonite. Fusing anything to the axle of a big wheel will retract the opposite side. That creates a nice little stationary spinning device. Physical objects or emitters can be fused onto that to create rotating traps that can be quickly spawned with auto build. Fusing a rocket to your shield will shoot you quickly upward when you hold block. 
This will work with an Octo Balloon as well, but you ascend quite a bit slower. Using flame emitters purely by themselves, controlled with Ultra Hand, gives you a perfect flamethrower that won't break. All it takes is your battery meter to power, which quickly comes back over time. If you do a shield surf onto a single metal rail or on a minecart track, you can grind it and even transfer from side to side. Link is either regular stance or is crushing it doing all this switch. Most vehicles you make with a steering stick can be launched off of by jumping forward. This can set you up for some slow-mo bow action just like jumping off a horse. Fusing a mushroom to a weapon will make charge attacks in the last hit of combos fling enemies comically far. That's going to make gathering their drop materials a little tricky though. Attaching a big wheel to a homing cart will make an improved battle bot that'll seek out enemies on its own. Spinning logs attached work for smacking enemies around, and emitters can provide some backup damage and crowd control. After you register your first horse at a stable, you can then board it there and take out any of your Breath of the Wild horses if you have the save data on your system. Fusing a grouping of explosives together lets you save them to auto-build. When you then summon those just a bit off the ground, they'll instantly detonate. That gives you access to spawnable air bombs. Another effect of fusing elemental gems to a shield is that when you block an attack, it'll activate the gem's effect back to the attacker with either fire, lightning, ice, or water. Create a tall structure with a platform on it, and you can use a stake to socket it into pretty much any wall. That'll give you an easy spot to use recall on. Magic rods and scepters amplify the effect of elemental gems you attach. This will let them shoot out extra orbs or just larger AoEs. The sapphire imbued ice effect is pretty good for creating platforms over water. Just like the flame emitters, using the beam emitters with Ultra Hand makes for a great ranged weapon. The more of these you stack together, the greater the damage effect. If you save a giant one to auto-build, you can whip that out and melt some things abnormally fast. Attach a cart or mine cart to a shield, and when you shield surf, it'll function kind of like a skateboard. This will surf a little better than normal on rough ground. If you use the previous technique I showed of recall canceling over edges, you can use that to jump and cling onto objects. When you're physically climbing on something like this, that will avoid any fall damage you might take because reasons. Keep an eye out for golden apples and trees. Those will provide more hearts and longer buff effects than normal apples when added to a recipe. Attach a wing to one of these rocks that fall from above and activate recall on that rock. When you're high up in the sky, use Ultra Hand to shake the wing free, allowing for easy high altitude flight. Throwing five Zonai charges into a capsule machine will give you a bonus payout of items. Use five of the larger Zonai charges, and that will dispense an even greater payout. Once you have the towing harness for your horse, you can attach emitters directly to it, or create a little battle cart to deal damage while you ride. When you see one of these bloopy bunny things, find a way to get above it so you can slow-mo snipe it as many times as you can before it runs off. If you instead follow where it runs to, it'll likely lead you right to a cave entrance. In the underground region, you'll periodically come across these shadowy statues holding pristine weapons, which have higher base damage values than many of the basic crusty weapons you'll find above ground. If you attach an Octo Balloon to a vehicle and save that to auto build, you can create a flying machine that can vertically take off. It also won't be weighed down by any unnecessary extra objects. Shooting a puff shroom at enemies will let you just walk right up to them and perform a critical strike to the back. By talking to the guard in the middle of Lookout Landing, you can enter the emergency shelter. If you're far enough into the game, this is one way to find a horned statue that lets you swap max hearts for max stamina or max stamina for max hearts. Stacking a bunch of individual platforms with rockets attached lets you continually blast off from one onto the next onto the next. You can select a weapon or shield from the inventory screen and destroy the material you fuse to it in case you want to fuse it with something else. 
This also works with stuff you've super glued to the Master Sword as well. And last, to get this to a nice even 40 for the video title, instead of destroying the material you fuse to gear, you can head to Terrytown to use the function of this guy. That lets you remove the material from a weapon or shield while retaining both. Alright, Tears of the Kingdom update patch for your brain complete. Let me know which one of these 40 was the most useful tactic you're going to go use, or if you already do. A big thanks to Hoyoverse for sponsoring this video, and remember that link to Honkai Star Rail is down below. As always, I'm Alex, and I'll see you next time.